Hello, everybody, everybody, man. I got a sister on my channel that's going to turn you out. Oh, my God. Watch out what she's about to tell us now. She got some black history that she going to put in pose and all that poetry and all that that intellectual stuff wound in together. And so and check this out. What happened was I'm walking the track in in L.A. I've been going to L.A. a lot. And I'll tell you why later, but I was walking this track because I got to get, you know, some of this fat off me. I got a lot on my mind, so on and so forth. But as I like the exercise, I see the sister, she walking the track too. Now, hold on. She walking faster than me. So I got to catch up. <laughs> she making me look bad. So I catch up. We strike up a conversation. I get to telling her about, you know, I'm telling everybody what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I get to telling about the strong inspirations, people. Y'all my yeah. folk, right? Mm -hmm. And so she says, hey, I got some stuff I got to say. And I got some black history things. She tells the guy who's sitting there selling DVDs, <laughs> hey, bootleg DVDs. She's so saying, wrong. Don't, don't snitch now. <laughs> he don't know who he is. He's a good guy. I talked to him. So she, he pulls out her book, a book right there on hand and everything, everything. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes here. That's why I want you. And oh man, I forgot to even tell you this main point. I'm Anthony Brogdon. I got I got sidetracked, everybody. And so, um, you know, thank you for coming and watching this once again. And y'all know that Juneteenth has become a national holiday. I got a video on the channel with a lady from the Juneteenth Foundation who tells you what the history of Juneteenth is all about and about them signing that bill. The interview happened before they signed it. So I talked to her. She's very excited. The thing has gone down. That's a sidebar. Uh, and you know what I want y'all to do? I want y'all to subscribe to the channel. My numbers are up. I can tell I, I, at least five, six people doing it a day. Y'all know I'm giving you this good content. I want you to like this video because the sister going to put something on your head. She got a good looking painter you know, behind her. Y'all need to like this video. Y'all need to hit the notifications bell because I'm putting four or five videos up a week. Bing, 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 and you get it so you can be the first to watch it. And then I want you to tell somebody about strong inspirations. Don't keep this to yourself acting like you know everything because you got it from the channel. All right, tell somebody. And then on my personal tip, what I like for you to do is watch my movie. Watch it on Saturday, June uh, 19th. Ain't that what it is, Saturday, June 19th? Watch my movie, watch it, watch it tonight. Watch it whenever you can and stream it on Amazon. Business in the Black, the rise of black business in America. Mm -hmm. Slaves who went to college. I know you didn't know that story. They don't teach that in school. All the way slaves gain their freedom is in my movie and so much more. And it's streaming on Amazon. This is the DVD and you can get the DVD on Amazon also on uh, my website, businessintheblack.net. The other thing, as you know, is I wrote this book. I'm a writer, I'm prolific now, I'm a historian. I'm the real deal, <laughs> the real deal Holyfield. My book goes with the movie, but also it has more facts. The book is going, it's blowing up. I'm telling you, I know it. I can feel it. More orders are coming in weekly. And I autographed the book for you too, because I'm so excited you took the time to order one. And it's also uh, got 200 facts, much of what the movie has, but it's more comprehensive. Took me a minute to write it. And I give it to you straight, no chase. I don't even add no commentary to the book. I let the facts stand on their own. And then I tell you where I got the facts. All right, my brothers and my sisters. And, and, and I know the lady, she's sitting there. She said, I got to go. I got things to do. And I say, one more second. Let me tell you this. You hear me use that word strong a lot, right? Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. I got a strong sister coming on right now. Mm -hmm. That's her introduction. Go ahead and mm -hmm. tell us your name and who, give us a little something. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. 
I appreciate the, the, the inspiration, the strong inspiration and the, the acronym that, that strong represents. I appreciate that. So let me just say a little bit about me. No, no, tell us your name. Tell us your name. My name is Stella. I wrote a book called Truth Shots in Ida's Brew, if you can see that. Yep. It's, uh, by Stella the Poet. It says cocktails and elixirs, and that's exactly what it is. It's a blending of thoughts, emotions, and history all at the same time. Okay, I gotta stop you right there. I don't mean no harm, no disrespect, but I do this to everybody. Where, where were you from? Where you, how you get to be who you are? Well, and it's interesting because that's part of how we connected because what you didn't tell your audience is that you simply, when I was walking past you, you simply said, are you interested in black history and facts? Yeah. And of course, that's what pulled me in. I, from LA, you know, went to LA schools, graduated from Beverly Hills High, but then went to Howard University. Oh, and I love it. When you and I connected, you said that you had a daughter that just graduated from Howard. Yep. I knew that you were a man of great intelligence. Yes. Um, and so my background was thinking I was black until I was immersed in black in Washington, DC. Really? And I was a broadcast journalism major. And that exposed me to all the things that I'm interested in, which are people and how people function in the world. Let me ask you this. Now in LA, do you get black out of LA? Is, I mean, you know, I mean, LA black. Well, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent you do because you know, I ended up working at KGLH. I went to black places in LA. So, you know, when I worked for KGLH, you know, that was Stevie Wonder Station and, and you get immersed in Black when you're around Black people. That's just yeah. where you are. You find Black people in any pocket anywhere in the world. Yeah, sure. Around the world, you get immersed in our culture. Yeah. And our universal. Let, let me ask you this now. What happens is, uh, you know, being out that I'm in Detroit and uh, an 80% Black town, I get Black every day. I walk out the door, there's Black everywhere. You know, there's some white folks somewhere here and there. But in LA, you get a lot of different mixtures of the races. You get the Mexicans and, 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 and other European groups. Does that kind of, you have to confer to not just black, but all the other races to, to, to intermingle? Does that do anything? Well, you know, we live in a multicultural society. Right. And in LA, this is a representation of all of that. So even with gentrification, you know, I've got Asian and black and white people all around me. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what's really important though, I need to just make note. There was a time in my life that I thought the people in LA who spoke Spanish were Mexican. So that's a misnomer on our part because that's not, it's never been true. You know, Latino people come from Guatemala, from El Salvador, um, Costa Rica. So, um, and the Black Mexican experience, LA was, you know, the governor of California was, was Pio Pico, which was African of African descent. So because I worked at the California African American Museum, and I'm a docent there now, I can tell you that California is rooted in Black. Okay. Do, 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 uh, do, you, do you consider, uh, we're going to get to the book and what have you, uh, do you consider Mexicans they call them brown, but does that give? Do you do, 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 does that lump us together? You know how they call. You know what I'm saying. Does that does that lump black and brown together to say, okay, now y'all lumped in it, and we're gonna give? Well, you I, I guess my, my that point, we give. Brown is all kinds of colors. I mean, you've got Puerto Ricans who look like you that speak Spanish. So I think it's important to expand what we think of as the African diaspora because we're the majority of people on the planet. Okay. We give ourselves in that way, we, we, we connect to our power um, differently. Do, do you, but I, 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 the other part of that question, do you think Mexicans consider themselves minorities and oppressed like many times black people? Is that the same kind of fight or? Well, know, I appreciate that question, but when you look at the census, uh, people of Latin, of the Latin of Latin descent will be the majority of people in this country within the next 10 to 20 years. Oh my God. I don't think that I don't think that the minority 
so to speak, right. um, is really a minority. <laughs> right. And the majority, right. really than a majority. Right. You saw Latin people um, voting for Donald Trump and you understood how diverse, including black people voting for Donald Trump, you understand that black is not all of African consciousness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now how did you uh, uh, start to write the book that you wrote? How did that, how did, were you always a writer or something like that? Or you just, it was a like voice in you that had to come out? All of that. I think as a broad, I, as a, hmm. I always wrote, I wrote diaries. I had diaries when I was growing up. It was okay. of yelling at my parents and getting my emotions out. Okay. I was a, and I was like the words. I love words. Okay. Words can do. And I, um, I went into broadcast journalism at Howard because people don't read. So it's like, if I could catch their ear. Yes. To get some information in. Sure. Um, and, you know, my, my life pattern, my life career has, has changed and intermingled, but there's one thing that remains constant, which is a healing force. And however way I can do that, I do that. So writing this book, Two Shots and Ida's Brew, was about getting my voice out because I was so pissed off in 2016 when Donald Trump became president of the United States. Oh, my God. And in... And it took me a minute. I was like stunned. And I, when I realized that there was such a large number of white people that voted for him, I thought that we live in a different kind of world. So I thought it was important for me to at least get my words out. And so I went to a workshop, um, Antioch. It was at Antioch University in, in LA at the time, um, International Women's Writers Guild. Yes. I crashed the workshop, a, a woman that I know was, a woman that I, I got to know was doing the workshop in the afternoon. And it was a creative writing workshop. Okay. And I came home after that workshop and they had done some samplings of some of the women in the conference doing three minutes of their writing. And it was clear to me a voice was missing. Okay. I came home and it just, it was like I vomited words out. It just poured out of me. And these are words that, as you had said offline to me about Sojourner Truth and some other people, what 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 is it? What what's the what's the historical perspective that you relate to nowadays? It's I'm giving voice to the ancestors. Um, okay. Ancestors are ascended masters, teachers, guides, and guardians. Ancestors are not necessarily people who just died. And okay. done the work. And we continue to, and they continue to educate us. And during the last year in 2020, last 16 months, the earth has been quiet. So the ancestors were able to rise up. And their voice is clear now. And you know, there is it's really interesting when you look at the young people, because there's no going back and there's no slowing the pace. There's a momentum. So I I speak to that. Oh, uh, what what do you do you write something of what they would say of how far we've come? Why you think that through? Let me say this. Yesterday mm -hmm. I went and my, my, my viewers, I went on a bike ride. I'm on this exercise kick, you know, trying to live my life. And we went through a neighborhood that is in the suburbs, not far from where I live. I kind of live in the suburbs too, right? And all these beautiful homes, and they were all homes. Uh, let's say 80% owned by black people. We've come a long way. Yeah, I live in a neighborhood that that, that was once controlled and owned by black people that's now been gentrified. What's really wonderful about we've come a long way, we've excelled in my lifetime in these 62 years from you know a Jim Crow era to, you know, I I lived with a Malcolm and a Martin and a and a um, and Obama, you know, I've, I've lived through, you know, um, Kamala Harris being vice president of the United States. But I don't want anyone to ever think that we do not have to continue to expand the conversation about our humanity. Right. Love it. 
because a long way means you can get a Donald Trump after a Barack Obama. Now, I don't know how far we've come when you can have that kind of a spring back, push back, but the long way is understanding that we've been prepared for this journey. The long way is that all those who have come before us, and this is one of the things that I, I really love about the idea of your book, we don't talk about how those entrepreneurs, what they came through in order to become who they are. Right. So a long way is a long way from the African soil on a boat, um, buried at sea with ancestors. Right. And a long way continues to be what our future can hold for our children. Right. And that feels like a long way to me. All right, I love it. That you you said the entrepreneurial thing. Let's let's plug your dad. You you had said your dad owned the business. Yes, my my dad. And my, so and so when you say this, you what he was he did it in the uh in the 70s or the 80s he, or he actually um he did a lot of different things, much like his daughter. Um and he did it in the 60s. I have a newspaper article where he sued a white um a white organization, a white company for his answering service, Midtown, Answer, Midtown Exchange, um, back in the 1960s. Um, he was a real estate broker. He was a photographer. You know, by the time he left, he was an actor uh, doing extra work on, on movies like Life. I remember he called me one day in the Staples Center and he said, you know, have you, have you ever heard of this guy named Kevin Costner? And it's like, okay, dad, this is like Kevin Costner never heard of you. You know, and he was doing Scorpion King at the time. So yeah, my dad was an entrepreneur, but part of the reason why my dad was an entrepreneur is because my dad didn't take orders well. I don't either. <laughs> no, my sister. No, I don't. <laughs> now, how about this, my, my viewers? I, was, I spoke at, uh, at Howard at my daughter's class, her senior year. The teacher got wind of me and invited me to come speak. And the class was about not owning, uh, not going on start a job when you graduate, but owning the business. The go. first thing I told them folks, I can't work for them dudes. <laughs> I, can't do it. I told, and it, and it was so crazy about it. Mm. There was a brother sitting in the back of the room. He had dashiki and hair all padded up, whatever. And he was sitting there looking like he wasn't going to pay attention. When I said that, that brother got up and went to the front of the class. Oh, I love that. Yeah, but it tricked me out. So let me just say this, you know, we're proud of being black. Um, I teach racism in the juvenile justice system sometimes in continuation schools as white supremacist capitalist patriarchal culture. And we can add imperialists to that because it's all over the world. You know, when I think about what my father, because, you know, my father was a POW in the Korean War. Really? My father, my father pissed off somebody and send him to the straight to the front lines to go rescue some troop that they couldn't hear from. And they parachuted him in. And by the time he got there, most of the folks were dead. Really? I thought my father was Filipino because we have um, a, a Native American bloodline. And, and somebody took my father to the POW camp, shot in the mouth, shot in the legs. Um, so, you know, racism ended up being what Black men in America, whether they know it or not, are always um, blanketed with. They have to continue to throw off that blanket. And after a while, you get tired. But my father persevered in terms of his identity yes. and wanted to show up in this world as a self-defined, self-made man. I love it. I love it. And, and, and he taught you that. Oh, yeah. My father taught me, do not depend on one source for your income. Yes. Ever. You know, um, writing a book is just, you know, one of the things that I can do. So I do what I can do. Yes. Um, and, and Howard teaches you to be prepared for everything. Yes. So, you know, words are my... Um, Words are the journey that I take people through in terms of this book. Now, what are some of the things that you write in the book? I mean, are there, um, so yeah, share that with us. 
it's broken up into three different sections, uh, poetic elixirs and healing cocktails. So Ida's Brew uh, starts the book and I have poems like Children See, um, The Magic of Black, Seeing Myself with New Eyes, What True Love Is, Infinite Love. Um, and then the second part of the book is a salute to Harriet Tubman. And I call it Harriet Chasers. And these are people, these, <laughs> This was written to people who would chase Harriet Tubman. Uh, it was geared towards them. So I have poems like The Rage is Real. And The Rage is Real ended up being in five parts. Um, I have Jim Crow on the Run. I have Little Boy Blue. Um, I have a poem about Dick and Jane. And then I have uh, the third section, which is Cheers to Sojourner, which are truth shots. So this is where my first poem was written. Um, Can you hear me now? And the valley of the dry bones and the despicables, deplorables and despised mob raid the Capitol. So let's do this. Hold on. Why, why you, 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 you do, you on a roll sister. So let's do this. Let's roll it a little bit further. Give me a, let's, can you recite one of the shorter poems, you know, not so long a poem and, 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 and let's get that. You, do you mind? No, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I have my daddy poem that I can save to the last one. Okay. Tuesday weekend. I have a poem um, that I read yesterday. Okay. Of the International Women's Writers Guild now. Since okay. Missing, right? Okay. And did a uh, booklet to its narratives from Black women in Africa and America. Okay. Today, it's called Our Stories, Ourselves. Okay. And it was fascinating to me how Black women around the world have the same issues. Um, and our pain is real. And so this is a piece that I wrote. Um, it's relatively short. It's okay. Like half minutes. Let's do it. And it's called The Rage is Real. Okay. And it's about racism. And this is part two, and this is the short version. Okay. The Rage is Real. Real enough to let emboldened liars, Jim Crow and Blackface know the jig is up. Real enough to let assaulters, to alert assaulters, molesters, and rapists, time's up. Real enough to see dreams of my father strung up, dreams of my mother's chained up, dreams of my brothers locked up and my sister's dreams deferred, forgetting they come from the land of Nzinga, the African queen, not from the land of Barbie. Rage knows white and wealth are not supreme. Privilege? Privilege is to be a human being. Parents, can you see? Anger, ignorance, and fear get planted in me. Where does rage go? A chain gang, a foot train, hiding in 400 years sold as human cargo, and 800 miles hunted by hounds in marshes and swamps on the Underground Railroad? It's in the anguish of grandmother's rape for life by master while Miss Ann sits knitting in the parlor acting unbothered. The rage is real. It's in the innocence of Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, and Michael Brown. It's in the demise of George Floyd and Eric Gardner. It's in Corey Jones and Philando Castile. It's in Joel Johnson, a human being with special needs shot on Philly streets just begging for quarters. It's in the mysterious snuffing out of Sandra Bland's life. It's in Breonna Taylor who woke up just to be murdered. The rage is about her and so many unnamed others. Google black man murdered. And you'll see black man murdered in the backyard. Black man killed in his apartment. Black man murdered in Jasper, Texas. Black man murdered in Mississippi. Black man murdered while jogging. Black man murdered in his garage. Too many murdered by police to give each one any justice. Mm. The rage is real. Denial of the pain is too. DNA inherited is me and you. It's a trauma in me and you, it's a teen rapes, it's veteran fathers, it's in children of bipolar mothers, it's in epic suicide rates, it's an inherited in the foster care and criminal justice system, it's in ghetto education, it's in greenhouse gas emissions. Rage festers, 
when untreated. It grows for a reason. Its pain and fear suppressed then explodes its out of control anger. Rage is a cry for action. Healing rage starts with loving compassion. Look in the mirror, it starts with your reflection. It's not about controlling rage. It's not about controlling anger. It's about accepting the truth, teachings, and growth rage offers. Outrage means when there is a knee on your neck, bullets in the back, there are few options. Rage is real, but hopefully it's only an unwanted house guest. Learn from it quickly. It doesn't go easily. It demands attention and can make a big mess. Yes. Boy, I tell you, how y'all do on TV like this? <laughs> how you do it? Phenomenal and emotional. I felt it. And you know, it's 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 uh I give you a short story. I, I did an interview with a lady who she know her great grandfather was lynched. He was on the way home to see his dad, uh to, to attend his dad's funeral, and he never made it. Mm. And the one thing I asked her, I said, Well, what do you think that felt like? She said, Can you imagine knowing that mm. you are surrounded by four or five people that are going to kill you. Mm -hmm. What he could have thought about knowing that his family would never know the true story of whatever happened to him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's part of Ida B. Wells' crusade. You know, she was a journalist that documented lynchings and was chased out of Memphis, Tennessee and, and went on to Chicago. I she didn't know that. 31. Um, her parents both died from yellow fever by the time she was 16 years old. I didn't know that. But her documentation of lynchings, I'm sure had to do with her own personal rape. I'm sure. Didn't I'm know sure. that. Well, okay, I would love to read one about my, let me, if, yeah. no, let me see if I can skip around because I'd love to read one to my daddy. Since okay, let's do that. We got daddy. time. About my daddy. Yeah, we got time. Let's go. Okay. My daddy. Robert, goodness and wholeness, a whole man. He's the man I most admire. A military Purple Heart recipient, a prisoner during the Korean War, a proud man, educated man, with injuries never discussed, yet understood. My daddy, a boastful, loving, single father. All four of his children had college degrees, something he was proud to share with strangers. My daddy, an entrepreneur, a photographer, a real estate broker, newspaper editor, a hospital administrator, handsome, smart. He always found, could always find him in the kitchen charming the women. He was one of those every woman's man. Daddy was politically savvy. A late blooming actor, his commercials and movies gave him great recognition. He always enjoyed new frontiers, exploring profitable ventures, increasing his investments, and growing his savings. My daddy. Before he transitioned, he talked about being most proud of deciding to return to school after the war and raising his four children. I'm a Harry Medical School college graduate. He was solid and stood strong, never backing down. He was always a businessman with friends in high places. We had free Angela black light posters on the walls in the 70s. My daddy. Daddy had a quick wit, candor, and a beautiful caramel colored shiny round ball head. He wore a beard, had a sly smile, and a no nonsense air. On his army card, his race was listed as Native American but he was always a black man raised in Memphis. Dad was his high school class president and yearbook editor. Sophisticated, he walked like he was a man of means and privilege, always proud with high moral character. My daddy. To say I love my daddy until the end of time 
is an understatement. He's a loving, fueling breath as my existence. I am the woman I am today because of his presence, trust, intelligence, and consistency in my life. In his honor, I live in truth, integrity, and creative genius. He passed away years ago today, whatever day today is. He is joy-filled, hanging out with women in the kitchen. He takes breaks by singing solos of How Great Thou Art with the angels from the Holman Methodist Choir. My daddy. Whoa, that's another one of them clappers, man. That's another one of them clappers. Oh, this sister D. And she walked fast. <laughs> she walked fast, man. You My daddy walked fast. Man, you I can't did. catch that sister on the track. She, <laughs> she gone. Everybody, let me tell you something. On Strong Inspirations, I find these people somehow, some way. I tell them about it, and we got stories that we're going to share. That's what I'm trying to do to y'all, my friends. So come on now. Uh, how about this right quick? How do you get the book? I mean, yeah, yeah. Is it on you know, Amazon? This, you got a yeah, website? it's on Amazon. Yeah, Truth Shots and Ida's Brew by Stella the Poet. It's okay. on Amazon. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put that in the description, there, everybody. Get get a copy of that book. Uh and uh she'll I'm sure she'll autograph it for you. Uh I ain't speaking for her, but I'm sure she will. And uh, get a copy of that book, folks. Let's go out there and do that. Let's share this. Let's, 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 if you got something that's on your heart, write it down. That's what she's telling us. True. You know, get it off your chest and it make you feel better. And then it goes down to history. And mm -hmm. if you're so inclined, you, you know, donate it to the museums. You know, that's what I'm doing is donating mm -hmm. some of my stuff to, uh, to the museum here in Detroit, uh, things that I've worked on. And so uh, I thank you for being on the show. Mm. I thank you for watching the show, my viewers. You see what I'm doing? Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button on this video because uh, it got emotional. It got emotional for her and it got emotional for me because I lost my mom uh, about three years ago. And I, I hope she's looking at me. I know she is. I just hope she's proud of me. Um, mm, yes. and, and tell somebody about the channel. Strong Inspirations. Um, mm. To you, my sister, I say with all sincerity, I want you to stay strong, stay safe, stay on your grind. I love what you're doing in that, in that, in that, in the writing, in the literary world, sharing these thoughts. Uh, but also, how about this? I want to give you the closing word. Mm. Closing word, and then we out. Mm. I just want to thank you. That's the closing word. Part of it is just thank you. Thank you for being. A strong inspiration. Thank you for showing up the way that you show up. I, I enjoy your videos. I appreciate your exposure to people and places and facts and history that we would not, we would not um, have. Part of my book, I've got these bookmarks and I have a bookmark that's the ending of one of my poems called The Magic of Black and the bookmark is just a quote in the, in the poem. And the quote is Black is the light in the dark. Ooh. Shaka Zuma, ba boom, <laughs> there it is. Ain't no more left. We out, bye bye. All that'll be in the description. We're gonna rock and roll. I'll see you again soon, I suspect, when I come back out that way. Thank you so right. much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Take good care.